All right, dear students, we have another question for purchase ledger control account uh, with the name of question number two. As you can see, the requirement first, we need to prepare the sales ledger control account. We have already done that, and now we have to prepare this purchase ledger control account that is PLCA, but a purchase ledger control account, also known as trade payables ledger control account. So we need to make this trade payables ledger or purchase ledger control account. This is the account for all of the credit suppliers combined. Okay. And this is not the account for any single individual supplier. Instead, this is the account for all of the suppliers of the business. So let us see how to make this account. First of all, beta, we have opening balances as we can see in here. We have two opening balances here. For purchase ledger beta, we have one debit balance and one credit balance, and both of these belong to 1st July. So 1st July, 1st uh, is always the opening, and beta 31st is always closing. So if it's 1st July, it's the opening balance. There are two opening balances. One is debit and one is credit. So beta debit balance brought down would goes on the debit side, and credit balance brought down goes on the credit side. So beta opening balances goes on the same side as it is written. Opening debit balance would go on the debit side and uh, oh, sorry, opening debit balance would go on the debit side and credit balance would go on the credit side. But what about the closing balances? But in the closing balances, the side always changes. If there is closing debit balance, it must come on the credit side. And if it's a closing credit balance, then it co must come on the debit side so in the balance cd the side always changes and the opening balance must come on the same side as it is written in the question now let us see beta which transactions belong to plca purchase ledger control account let's see one by one which transaction belong to this first of all beta we have payment to creditors yes whenever beta we are paying our suppliers this is this would reduce our liability so if you want to reduce the liability, liability would be debited. So the PLC would be debited and the reference would be bank. Now, beta, instead of writing payment to supplier, we are supposed to write bank. Okay, because we need to write the name of the account and not the description that is given. And if the examiner is not mentioning whether we are paying through check or cash, we would always write bank. Okay, because this is the default payment mechanism for the businesses okay businesses normally do not like dealing with cash instead they pay through check then we have check from credit customers we are not making customers account right now instead we are making suppliers account then purchases on credit yes but a purchases on credit must come here and the purchase of cash or purchase on check must not be recorded in a liability account instead they must be recorded in the cash or bank account accordingly Whenever we are buying goods on credit, that would increase our liability. So the entry would be better. Purchase account would be debited and liability account would be credited. So instead of writing purchase on credit or credit purchase, we are just supposed to write purchase. Okay. Because there are no two accounts with the name of purchase, such as cash purchase or credit purchase. Instead, there is only one account for purchase. Okay. So we are not supposed to write credit purchase. Instead, we are only supposed to write purchase. Then we do not have sales in here. Why? Because we are making suppliers account and sales is made to customers and not to suppliers. Then we do not have a bad debt because customers go bad debt uh, and we are not bad debt for someone else. Then we do not have discount allowed here. Instead, it's a discount receive. Okay. Other information is given. Why? Because we are also supposed to make uh, sales ledger control account and sometimes examiner only asks for one requirement but gives the data for both of uh, the accounts just to confuse us so we just need to cherry pick the information that is necessary for us to solve the question we have discount received but whenever the uh, discount is received this would decrease our liability now the entry would be discount receive is going to be created and plca would be going to be debited we need to debit the PLC and we need to create a discount receive. Then we have return inward and outward. We are supposed to write return outward. And instead of writing return outward, we can write purchase return. The examiner prefers sales return and purchase return instead of return inward or outward. 
so if purchase is going on the credit side then the purchase return must go on the opposite side okay purchase return purchase return reduces the liability entry would be purchase return is going to be credited and liability account is going to be debited now uh, we have closing balance as you can see sales ledger credit balance we are not making sales ledger right now we are making purchase ledger now as you can see this is purchase ledger debit balance debit balance here means beta abnormal balance at the end of the year this is balance cd beta if uh, opening balance uh, opening debit balance is coming on the debit side then the closing debit balance must come on the opposite side okay uh, in the balance cd side always changes okay so this is the balance cd that is 26 dollars so there is also one more transaction and that is contra during the half year debit balance in the sale ledger amounting to 438 were transferred to purchase ledger so beta if we are transferring sales ledger to purchase ledger beta this means it's a contra transaction okay if we are transferring sales ledger to purchase ledger this means it's a contra transaction and for that purpose we need to debit the plca so the plc is going to be debited and the reference would be contra slc reference would be contra slc then beta we need to uh, balance this account one thing that is missing that we need to find out uh, is balance cd so beta how can we find the balance cd we need to find which is the bigger side obviously beta if the opening balance is giving on the credit side for liability then the closing balance must always come on the debit side now the biggest side here would be a credit side why because on the debit side one important value is missing and that is balance cd okay if we add up the bigger side this would goes on both of the sides and the shorter side balance beta would be a balance cd and this balance carried down would becomes balance brought down at the start of next period so if the balance cd is coming on the debit side then balance bd must come on the credit side that is the opposite side and if balance cd is coming on the credit side then the balance bd must come on the debit side now as you can see at the end of the month or in start of the next month again we have two balances one is the normal balance that is credit balance and another one is the minority balance that is the debit balance this means we owe our suppliers this much amount but one or uh, to one or two of our suppliers we have paid some amount extra and this 26 now becomes our receivable so if we are making a balance sheet that is statement of financial position this 13241 must be reported under current liability with the name of trade payable and this 26 must be reported under current assets with the name of trade receivables so better trade receivables means uh, the money that people owe us no matter those people are our customers or our, are our suppliers so anything that people owe us would goes under trade receivables and current asset and anything that we owe our suppliers uh, in uh, either we owe to our suppliers or to our customers this doesn't make any difference if we owe money to people then it is our trade payables so this credit balances uh, would go under trade payables for both PLCA and SLCA and debit balance for both SLCA and PLCA should uh, be reported under current assets such as uh, under the name of trade receivables.